When the next generation Nissan Leaf is launched in the near future, it will feature Nissan's ProPilot semi-autonomous technology. This system was already available in Japan on the Serena minivan, but the Leaf will be the first Nissan in America to feature it. Fortunately, we didn't have to wait for the launch of the Leaf to try it, since Nissan fitted the system to some road crossovers for the press to experience, Nissan's representatives did say that it has no plans to offer it on the road, yet, though the implementation here seemed close to production ready. How does it work? Nissan's ProPilot Assist is classified as an SAE Level 2 semi-autonomous driving feature. What this means is that it offers only partial automation, and the driver still has to maintain attention and engagement with the task of driving. Nissan emphasized this too, saying that this is not something where you can take your hands off the wheel. However, what automation it does have is fairly comprehensive. While remaining in one lane, the car will manage the steering to keep the car in the center. The adaptive cruise control can bring the car to a full stop and then resume acceleration when the vehicle in front of it begins moving again. This automated steering relies on a single camera, which on our test road was mounted in the windshield ahead of the rearview mirror. The adaptive cruise control uses radar sensors behind the front fascia. Operating the system is extremely easy. It hardly takes any more input than setting cruise control. In fact, turning on the cruise control is the first step. After that, the driver presses the Nissan Safety Shield button, which has an icon of a car surrounded by radiating circles. On the instrument panel screen, this will bring up grayed out icons of the steering wheel in the upper left corner and lane markers on either side of the car icon. Then you set your cruise control speed, and within a second or two, the camera will recognize the lane markers and provide steering assistance. Turn on cruise. Turn on safety shield, set cruise, and you're done. If you need to change lanes, switching on the turn signal and turning will temporarily disable the steering assist, but once you've changed lanes, it will automatically turn back on once it finds the lane marks again. Hitting the brakes will also shut all aspects of assistance and cruise control. What's it like? First off, it really is as easy to activate as described above. It's no more complicated than any other adaptive cruise control on the market. And the automatic resumption following a lane change makes it a breeze to use even when traffic is flowing and you need to move around other vehicles. And if you ever switch it off manually or by hitting the brakes, you simply hit the resume button for cruise, and the whole system comes on again. The steering can handle fairly aggressive interstate corners too. The test loop was a section of I-696 in Michigan between the Nissan Technology Center in Farmington Hills and Woodward Avenue in Royal Oak, and almost every tight turn was navigated without additional input from the driver, and at speeds of right around 70 miles per hour. The ability for the car to slow to a stop worked very well, bringing the car to a halt smoothly and safely, and holding it at stops. It also accelerated up from a stop smoothly, and, unless traffic was moving more briskly than usual, generally kept up. These abilities mean that ProPilot Assist should be a serious boon for people dealing with gridlock traffic, or making long jaunts across the country on interstates. I personally would have appreciated this feature in college on my long drives between Indiana and Kansas. 13 hours of endlessly straight interstate can wear you out and having this assist would have really helped with fatigue. And in traffic jams, just the thought of not having to gently feather the accelerator and jump between it and the brake should bring relief to ankles nationwide. It does of course have limits, and these limits are what drivers still have to pay attention and intervene at times. While we were testing on the inside lane of one of the highway curves, the car started drifting outward and went far enough that the lane departure warning triggered and I had to add some steering input. This is not a fully autonomous system. Nissan's representatives warned us that the adaptive cruise control can't overcome some speed differentials, that is going from highway speed to a stop in a short period of time. So if traffic comes to a slow or a stop very quickly, 
the driver may have to provide stopping power manually. Additionally, while the automated steering generally does a good job of keeping the car centered, there were a number of times that it drifted farther to either side than I would go driving in full manual. Is it worth it? This all depends on your driving situation and what's important to you in a car. If you're dealing with lots of slow moving and stop and go traffic, or really long interstate commutes, Nissan's ProPilot semi-autonomous technology is definitely worth your consideration. It would be extremely useful for those conditions. If not, this feature likely won't make a big difference in your daily driving. As useful as it can be, it still shouldn't be the only thing that drives your car purchase. If you decide you don't like whatever Nissan the feature is fitted to, you shouldn't get that car, because this feature won't outweigh the parts you dislike. So it's a cool technology for those who find it useful, but not necessarily a deal maker. Nissan is launching ProPilot Assist in America late this year on the second generation Leaf and they want everyone to take particular note of the second word in that brand. In January 2017, Nissan's then-CEO Carlos GHOSN delivered two keynotes just days apart at CES and the North American International Auto Show that focused on the company's electrification and automated driving efforts. Notably, GHOSN repeatedly referred to the partially automated ProPilot system that launched in Japan last year as autonomous. Not automated, but autonomous. Here in America, the system is called ProPilot Assist because this is not an autonomous driving system, but a driver assist. While we won't get to see the new Leaf Sense camouflage until September 5th, Nissan did invite a group of media to its Farmington Hills, Michigan engineering center to sample some rogues equipped with the ProPilot Assist system. Nissan calls this a level 2 automation system because it is capable of doing coordinated longitudinal and lateral control. That means it can handle acceleration, braking and steering. What it doesn't do is let the driver climb into the back seat to take a nap, or relax and watch a movie. ProPilot Assist builds on existing advanced driver assist systems including lane keeping assist and adaptive cruise control with enhanced software capabilities. As Andy Christensen, Senior Manager of Intelligent Transportation Research explained it, the system is designed to reduce stress and increase safety, not to replace the driver. Unlike Cadillac Super Cruise and Audi's Traffic Jam Pilot which are designed for hands-free use, the Nissan system explicitly requires drivers to keep at least one hand on the wheel at all times. A torque sensor in the steering wheel looks for small motions indicative of a driver holding the wheel or resistance to automatic steering motions. If the system decides that the driver doesn't have a reasonably firm grip on the wheel after 5 to 10 seconds it gives an audible warning and flashes an alert in the instrument cluster. Five seconds later, the alerts get progressively more insistent. Ten seconds after that, it will automatically pulse the brakes a couple of times trying to get your attention. After 25 to 30 seconds with no sign the driver is responding, ProPilot will start slowing the vehicle and when speed drops below 40 mph, the hazard lights are turned on. Without intervention from the driver, the car will come to a complete stop in its lane. Since ProPilot doesn't yet have lane changing capability, it was deemed safer to stop the vehicle in lane than to try to pull to the side of the road. Whether or not that's actually the best approach for such a system remains to be seen but I didn't take the opportunity to try it out on a busy Detroit interstate. Given these limitations what does ProPilot actually do? On the right spoke of the steering wheel. The button normally used to activate the cruise control now has a new icon, a blue car with circles radiating from it that symbolize the safety shield. Essentially, you use ProPilot exactly as you would normally use cruise control, except that the system now actively tries to keep the vehicle in the center of the lane you are in. If you try to nudge the car over to one side or the either without a turn signal on, you'll feel the system trying to steer back to the center of the lane. Like other lane keeping systems, it's relatively easy to overpower since it is designed as an assist, not to take over from the human driver. 
The forward-facing radar tracks the vehicle ahead and maintains a consistent gap up to whatever speed you set. The graphics in the instrument cluster show when a vehicle is detected within range and the lane markers go from grey to green when markings are detected consistently on both sides of the car. From a functional standpoint, the system seemed to work very well within the constraints of what it is designed to do. When lanes were detected, ProPilot did a very good job of keeping the road tracking the center without bouncing back and forth. This stretch of I-696 north of Detroit that we tested on features of a number of curves of varying radius as well as overpasses that saw us go from bright sunshine to dark shadow.